Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala program. I am Dr. Shuev Lukman from the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants, Lucknow. Today, we are going to discuss on module lipids, biosynthesis versus oxidation from the paper lipid metabolism. The objectives of the module is to understand the regulation of fatty acids, how the breakdown of the lipids or the fat molecules is dilapidated and what is the fate of lipid metabolism. There is a crosstalk between the biosynthesis as well as oxidation in lipid metabolism. And this crosstalk imparts the course of action which rivets the intercourse and degradation as well. One may foresee that the pathway for the breakdown of the lipids would be swept of the biosynthesis pathway. Nevertheless, this would not allocate the discrete regulation of both the pathways to crop up yet specified the variety that the pathways are alienated within the diverse cellular compartments. For example, the biosynthesis of lipids most of the part of the synthesis takes place in cytoplasm. Whereas, most of the oxidation part of the lipid metabolism takes place in the mitochondria. The utilization of nucleotide cofactors is the additional key difference as the biosynthesis of lipids involves NADPH oxidation while the breakdown of the lipids or the oxidation of the lipid engrosses the reduction of NAD plus and FADH plus. Both the biosynthesis as well as the oxidation of lipids exploits acetyl-CoA which is a two carbon active intermediate. In the lipid biosynthesis, the activated form of acetyl-CoA subsets provisionally next to the enzyme complex as manolyl-CoA. The manolyl-CoA synthesis is the initial unswerving 
spread of the fatty acid biosynthesis and acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme catalyzes the reaction. It is the foremost site of the fatty acid biosynthesis regulation. Like other carboxylases, acetyl CoA carboxylase requires biotin as a cofactor, which transfers carbon dioxide to the substrate. In addition to the biotin and carbon dioxide, acetyl CoA carboxylase requires ATP for the reaction. Hence, sometimes the enzyme referred to as ABC A stands for ATP, B for biotin, C for carbon dioxide enzyme. As compared to distinct micronutrient classes, for example, proteins and carbohydrates, lipids or fats, acquiesce a good amount of energy. In terms of number of ATP's molecule on per gram basis. In addition, lipids or fats are vital for energy storage, membrane formation in the form of phospholipid as well as in the signaling pathway. The metabolism of lipids comprise of anabolic route which generates biologically significant molecules from the dietary sources and the catabolic procedure that engender the primary metabolite from the fatty acids and energy. This picture represents the interlinked metabolic process of the carbohydrate metabolism amino acid metabolism as well as lipid metabolism. Since the module is of lipid metabolism, we concentrate only through the lipids as shown in the figure representing mitochondria where the outer membrane, the conversion of fatty acid take place through beta oxidation resulting in the formation of acetyl-CoA which ultimately forms the citrate entering through the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the citric acid cycle. The first stable product is citrate, then from citrate to isocitrate, alpha ketoglutrate, succinyl CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, and oxaloacetate. In this, NADH and FADH2 is formed. which is utilized for the aerobic production of the ATP 
and also at many places like acetyl-CoA formed as a result of isoleucine and leucine as well as other amino acid breakdown enters the mitochondria aspartate through auxiliary state enters the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria pyruvate through the oxidative decarboxylation results in the formation of acetyl-CoA enters the mitochondria through the hydro Oxidation of threonine, valine, isoleucine and methionine, succinyl-CoA enters the mitochondria. Alpha-ketoglutarate as well as glutamate also enters the mitochondria. And this all results in the production of the ATP. This is a comparative table representing the biosynthesis as well as oxidation process of the lipid metabolism where we can see the reaction type, the biosynthetic reaction is an anabolic and ordered reaction whereas oxidation is a catabolic and non-ordered reaction. The process is reductive in case of biosynthesis whereas oxidative in case of oxidation. The site is cytoplasm in case of biosynthesis, mitochondria in case of oxidation. Bonding is covalent in biosynthesis of lipids covalent also in the case of oxidation. The nature of enzyme in biosynthesis is multifunctional whereas it is separated oxidation. The biosynthetic enzymes on one polypeptide chain known as fatty acid chain whereas enzymes of the oxidation are degradative in nature and not associated with each other. The cofactor required in biosynthesis is NADPH whereas NAD and FAD is the cofactor in oxidation. The energy is 49 ATP equivalent required for the biosynthesis of lipids whereas 33 ATP equivalent yield you can get from the oxidation of the lipids. Regulation is through acetyl-CoA carboxylase whereas the regulatory point in oxidation is the availability of acetyl-CoA. The starting point is methyl end whereas carboxylase the end is the methyl, uh, starting point in the oxidation. The precursor is acetyl-CoA in biosynthesis, fatty acid is the precursor in oxidation. Product is fatty acid in biosynthesis whereas product is acetyl-CoA in the oxidation. Thioester formation is with acyl carrier protein whereas with, with coenzyme A in oxidation. Configuration in biosynthesis is beta hydroxy acyl intermediates whereas L beta hydroxy acyl intermediate is the configuration of oxidation. Biotin requirement is essential in biosynthesis where it is not essential in oxidation. Malonyl CoA is the source of two carbon unit in biosynthesis where it is not involved in the oxidation process. Elongation process at biosynthesis stops at carbon 16. Longer chain requires other enzymes and reaction is driven by carbon dioxide release whereas elongation is not involved. The oxygen at is it is the oxidative process. How the coordination of fatty acid as well as breakdown through the regulation of fatty acid synthesis takes place. In diet, when carbohydrates affords as an equipped source of energy and fuel, the beta oxidation of lipids is redundant and is therefore down regulated. Two key enzymes acetyl CoA carboxylase and carnitine acyl transferase 1 are crucial to the synchronization of lipid metabolism or the fatty acid metabolism. The acetyl-CoA carboxylase is the first and regulatory enzyme of the lipid biosynthesis and 
the carnitine acyl transferase 1 is another regulatory enzyme that check the transport of lipids into the mitochondrial matrix for the beta oxidation process. The intake of an excessive carbohydrate feast elevates the level of blood glucose and thus affects the following phenomena. Number one, it elicitates the insulin discharge. Number two, it dephosphorylase acetyl-CoA carboxylase by insulin-dependent protein phosphatase through activation. Number three, there is a formation of manolyl-CoA with the help of acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And finally, number four, the inhibition of carnitine acyl transferase 1 by malonyl CoA, thereby averting the entry of fatty acid into the matrix of mitochondria. When the level of blood glucose plummet between the meals, then the following events takes place. The first is the activation of cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase A by the release of glucagon. Second event is the inactivation and phosphorylation of ACC. Third is the descendance of malonyl CoA concentration. Fourth event is the alleviation of the inhibition of the fatty acid entry into the mitochondria. The fifth event is the entry of the fatty acids into the matrix of the mitochondria. Six is the triggering of the fatty acid mobilization by glucagon in the adipose tissue. And seventh, is the arrival and the supply of the fatty acids begins in the blood represents the pictorial depiction of the fatty acid synthesis as well as fatty acid oxidation especially the beta oxidation On the left hand side of the picture, you can see from the dietary carbohydrates, there is a high blood glucose, insulin acts on that and phosphatase is the inhibitor of that. The dietary carbohydrate result in the formation of glucose through glycolysis and pyruvate dehydrogen conferase. It forms acetyl-CoA which through acetyl-CoA carboxylase produces manonyl-CoA and from manonyl-CoA through multi-step reaction by fatty acid synthesis, fatty acids are synthesized or formed. This manonyl-CoA is the inhibitor of the fatty acyl-CoA which 
transform to fatty acyl carnitine to carnitine acyl transferase 1. The fatty acyl carnitine forms carnitine by the addition of coenzyme A to form fatty acyl CoA and in presence of FADH and ADH through spiral reaction of beta oxidation acetyl CoA is formed in the mitochondria. The oxidation of the fatty acid is a function of the concentration of unesterified fatty acids in the plasma. The unesterified fatty acids or the free fatty acids are either produced by the lipoprotein lipase or are discharged from the adipose tissues into the circulatory system. In adipose tissues, insulin and glucagon hormones control the recuperation of triacylglycerols. The deployment of the fatty acids for either biosynthesis or oxidation relies on the nutritional status of the organism and more exclusively on the accessibility of the carbohydrates. Due to the close association between the carbohydrate metabolism, lipid metabolism and ketogenesis, the degree of the fatty acid breakdown in the liver vary from that of the tissues present in the skeleton and heart muscle. The heart and the skeletal muscle have an irresistible catabolic utility. In animals, the trend of lipid or fat metabolism in the liver relies on the nutritional state. For example, in fed animal, the liver change carbohydrates to fats or lipids. Whereas, in fasted animals, oxidation or breakdown of lipids or fats, gluconeogenesis and ketogenesis are supplementary vigorous procedures. McGarry and Foster in 1970s while studying the oxidation or breakdown of the lipids have proposed that the manolyl coa concentration the primary unserving intermediary of fatty acid biosynthesis established the rate of lipid or fat oxidation the fundamental traits of their hypothesis are as under. In the fed nourished animals, the manolyl coa concentration or the level has been found elevated due to the active conversion of glucose to fatty acids. At a micromolar concentration, manolyl CoA restrains hepatic CPT1, thus diminishing the repositioning of fatty acyl residues from coenzyme A to carnitine and their translocation into the mitochondria.
a depressed beta oxidation is also one of the fundamental trait of their hypothesis in the fasting or the starved animals the hepatic metabolism move from the breakdown of the glucose to gluconeogenesis with a consequential decline in the biosynthesis of fatty acid second the manolil coa concentration decreases and the reticence of cpti is reassured the total cpti activity increases and the sensitivity of the cpti in root for manolil coa decreases another important feature which is the rapid formation of acyl carnitines and translocation into the mitochondria finally stimulation of beta oxidation and ketogenesis takes place how the oxidation process or the breakdown of fatty acid is regulated in mitochondria it was in 1970s or during 1970s mcgarry and foster revealed the foremost hegemony on the beta oxidation along with intersect amid carbohydrate oxidation and lipid or fat fat metabolism as well when the supply of carbohydrate is in abundance it increases its oxidation inside the mitochondria causing a high accretion of citrate which ought to be exported to the cytosol where it is cleaved by atp mount citrate lyase into acetyl coa and malate the high concentration of citrate activates acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme to turn transform acetyl coa to malonyl coa which is substrate for the biosynthesis of fatty acid and which is also being referred to as signal of plenty to restrain concurrent occurrence of oxidation or breakdown with the biosynthesis malonyl coa inhibits the action of carnitine palmitate transferase 1 and accordingly prevents the entry of fatty acids into the mitochondria for the beta oxidation process to happen the carnitine palmitate transferase 1 controls the high flux coefficient and has been revealed to be the rate limiting steps for beta oxidation and this is under the feedback control of the cpti in addition to the regulation arbitrated by malonyl coa it has also been verified that the adenosine monophosphate activated 
protein kinase, which is called as AMPK, it kindles carnitine palmitate transferase 1. Consequently, the AMP activated protein kinase amplify the carnitine palmitate transferase 1 activity by releasing the inhibition. Inactivates acetyl CoA carboxylase, lowers the malonyl CoA concentration, and intercede a strenuous response to metabolic stress by invigorating the oxidation or breakdown of fatty acids. The mechanism of increasing the activity of carnitine palmitate transferase 1 by AMP activated protein kinase involves the phosphorylation of the cytoskeleton especially the cytokeratin 18 and 8 elements. The recycling of the cofactors at a restricted concentration is considered as an intramitochondrial control on beta oxidation flux. CHREBP which is an adept regulator of lipid in liver. Actually in liver, when glycogen storage exceeds its limit, the surplus of glucose is sidetracked into the lipid metabolic pathway. Glucose is broken down to acetyl-CoA through pyruvate, which is used for the de novo biosynthesis of fatty acid, which subsequently integrated into the triacylglycerol formation and exported from the hepatocytes as very low density lipoproteins. The genes encoding fatty acyl synthase and ATP bound citrate lyase of lipogenesis and liver pyruvate kinase and glucokinase of glycolysis are synchronized by the intonation of their transcription rates. Subsequently, genes encoding these enzymes are subjected to allosteric and post-translational regulation. These genes enclose carbohydrate or glucose response elements liable for their transcriptional control. SREBP, which is a sterol response element binding protein, in instance, 1C is one of the most important transcription factor that wield its power over lipid and glucose homeostasis. In lipogenesis, SREBP regulates the expression of numerous genes and its own transcription is subdued by the glucagon and enhances by insulin. Conversely, in addition to SREBP activity, a basic helix loop helix leucine zipper transcription factor was also recognized at CHREBP. CHREBP was acknowledged as the foremost glucose responsive transcription factor and is essential for glucose induced expression of liver pyruvate kinase and the lipogenic genes ACC1 and FAS. Liver X receptors, which is also abbreviately known as LXRs, being the member of the steroid thyroid hormone superfamily of cytosolic ligand binding receptors, LXRs wander to the nucleus for binding and expression of specific target sequences. LXRs alpha and LXR beta are the two forms that articulates heterodimers with RXRs, which are retinoid X receptors, and control the expression of genes consequent to the binding of 9 cis retinoic acid or oxysterols.
vital switch of the lipogenic pathway and Krebs gene is an unserving target of LXRs which is activated by glucose. Slide number 28, modulation of glucose and lipid homeostasis by CHREBP. In the cells, when the glucose entry is high, it results in enhanced activity of the pentose phosphate pathway, ensuing high accumulation of xylulose 5-phosphate. It activates PP2A delta that dephosphorylates CHREBP both in the nucleus and in the cytosol. In the liver, the active CHREBP role on the expression of many genes involved in the homeostasis of lipid and glucose metabolism. Also, the activation of LXR alpha in the liver by lipid ligands results in upsurge CHREBP expression that lead to further regulation of glucose and lipid homeostasis. In both the liver and adipose tissue, CHREBP is an adapt regulator of glucose mediated lipid homeostasis. Overall, CHREBP regulates 50% of the lipogenesis in the liver throughout its intensive performance on the expression of the glycolytic and lipogenic genes. So students, in this module, today we have learned about how the synchronization of biosynthesis and oxidation of lipids happens, how the regulation of fatty acid synthesis and breakdown is coordinated, how the oxidation or breakdown of the fatty acid in mitochondria happens and what are the factors that regulates the biosynthesis and fatty oxidation in mitochondria as well as in cytoplasm. We have talked about CHREBP which is an adept regulator of lipid in liver. Also, the liver X receptors, which are called as LXRs, and how the modulation of glucose and lipid homeostasis by CHREBP takes place. Thank you.